From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Thursday, December 15th, 2022. EU gets closer to U.S. data sharing agreement. The U.S. and EU used to have the Privacy Shield Agreement to allow companies to move data back and forth between the two regions while maintaining the privacy protections of the citizens of the two regions. But challenges to the agreement have meant that companies have had to each negotiate their own standard contract clauses or stop transferring customer data between the regions. However, the EU published a draft proposal this week to reestablish a framework for all companies. In October, the U.S. began implementing new safeguards on how its intelligence agencies can access such data. EU citizens will be able to appeal data handling to an arbitration panel, and the U.S. has agreed to limit intelligence agency data collection. Microsoft signed malicious drivers. A coordinated disclosure from Microsoft, Mandiant, Sophos, and Sentinel One revealed that malicious actors use drivers certified by Microsoft's Windows Hardware Developer Program to perform kernel mode operations like terminating security software, deleting protected files, and acting as rootkits to hide other processes. Microsoft noted the attackers already needed to gain admin access on a system to exploit the drivers. The disclosure notes the toolkits used in the drivers appear consistent with bring your own vulnerability driver attacks. Microsoft revoked several hardware developer accounts in early October for submitting the drivers. Sophos attributed the attack with high confidence to the Cuba ransomware operation, with Sentinel-1 saying it saw one case of Hive ransomware operators using the attack. InfraGuard data for sale on the dark web. Security researcher Brian Krebs reported that the user database for the U.S. FBI's InfraGuard program appeared for sale on a cybercrime forum on December 10th. The program was designed to build information-sharing partnerships between the FBI and private firms, including operators of critical infrastructure. Krebs contacted the seller, who said they obtained access by creating a new InfraGuard account, posing as the CEO of a major U.S. financial corporation. The seller said he used a fake email, but listed the actual CEO's phone number in the application. The impersonated CEO said the FBI never contacted them by phone to verify the application. The dataset mostly reveals emails and phone numbers, but also allows for direct messaging of other InfraGuard members, opening the door to potential social engineering. Senate introduces Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act. Senators Elizabeth Warren and Roger Marshall introduced the bipartisan bill, which seeks to give due legal authority to limit the use of cryptocurrency for money laundering. If it goes into law, the bill would bring Know Your Customer or KYC rules to wallet providers and miners. It would also prohibit financial institutions from making transactions with digital asset mixers that can be used to hide the origin of funds. The act would also require institutions to report some transactions from wallets that aren't hosted on an exchange or another third party. These would be self-hosted wallets. And now a word from our sponsor, Fortra. The cybersecurity landscape is full of single solution providers, making it easy for unexpected cyber threats to sneak through the cracks. That's why Fortra is creating a stronger, simpler strategy for protection, one that increases your security maturity while decreasing the operational burden that comes with it. Fortra's integrated, scalable solutions help customers face their toughest challenges with confidence. Learn more at Fortra.com. That's F-O-R-T-R-A dot com. U.S. crackdown on Chinese semiconductors continues. This news comes in two pieces, both from the Financial Times. Its sources say the U.S. Commerce Department will place the Chinese chipmaker Yangtze Memory Technologies, or YMTC, on its entity list. This would bar U.S. firms from selling technology to YMTC without a license. On October 7th, the U.S. placed YMTC on an unverified list of entities that it was unable to conduct end-user checks on to make sure U.S.-based technology wasn't being diverted for military use. We're also seeing the impact of existing U.S. sanctions on the overall chip market in China. The Financial Times' sources also say that the chip designer Arm determined that it cannot sell its latest Neoverse 5 series designs to Alibaba, concluding internally that the U.K. and U.S. would not approve licenses to export its technology. The chips fall under the Wassenaar Multilateral Agreement, which requires a license to export dual-use technology that could be diverted for military use. Royal Ransomware Uses Novel Encryption While the ransomware landscape continues to see new operations emerge, the Royal Ransomware gang has made a name for itself with sophisticated tactics and rapidly expanding scope. A new report on the group from the Cyber Reason Security Research and Global SOC team outlined one item in its toolkit, 
partial encryption. This is not new, but Royal has expanded on the tactic with flexible percentage encryption that appears designed for specific targets. It uses multiple threads to further speed encryption time and uses a variety of tactics to stop and start encryption. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services warned last week of Royal targeting healthcare providers, but the report found the group operating fairly agnostically across regions and industries. The researchers note that Royal doesn't use affiliates and may have extensive membership drawn from the now defunct Conti Group. Automated attacks create a flood of malicious packages. A new report from Checksmarks in Illustria outlines a new automated attack campaign targeting users of NPM, Nougat, and PyPy. The attack appears to automatically generate malicious packages, which pose phishing links as offers for free resources. The report marks the scale of the attack as unique, creating over 144,000 packages by the same threat actor. The scale makes it difficult for security teams to identify and take down each offender. This kind of spam tactic against the open source software supply chain means malicious packages can stay available for longer, increasing chances of click-through. CISA warns of Veeam vulnerabilities. The U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency added two flaws impacting Veeam's popular backup and replication software to its known exploited vulnerability list. These vulnerabilities received critical ratings, exploitable by a remote unauthenticated attacker for arbitrary code execution. Positive Technologies disclosed the vulnerabilities, and both received patches back in March. CISA did not state if threat actors actively targeted either vulnerability, but the firm CloudSec reported earlier this year a tool using the vulnerabilities was being advertised as a fully weaponized tool for remote code execution. Now that you're done with today's cybersecurity headlines, make sure you have Defense in Depth in your podcast subscriptions. This week is the perfect time to check it out if you're new to the show with our episode, How Should We Discuss Cyber with the C-Suite? If you've ever debated about how detailed to get in your conversations with business leaders, you need to check it out. We'll break down if you really need to dumb down technical content, or is that just a recipe for trouble? Check it out at CISOseries.com or in your podcast app of choice. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.